rivalry is fighting a ticket inside Spartan Stadium today. It is a very tough buy. Black market prices last week <laughs> soared as high as $800, more even than tickets for last year's Red Wings appearance in the Stanley Cup Finals. East Lansing has not had a game this big in a long time. How long? Well, Motown's four tops were the top band in the land. Jerry Ford was a congressman from Michigan. Gordy Howe still skated for the Red Wings. Denny McLean had just posted his first 20-win season for the Tigers. That would have been 1966, when Bubba Smith and the Spartans finished undefeated. The only blemish, the infamous 10-10 tie with Notre Dame. This year's Spartan team saw their hopes for a perfect season dashed last week at Northwestern when a 28-yard attempt at a game-winning field goal was blocked in the final seconds. But as it turned out, that did very little of anything to dampen the enthusiasm about this rivalry as we welcome you to a chilly East Lansing, Michigan. Dave Barnett along with Bill Curry. A lot of people this week wondering if close shaves for both these teams will affect this game today. First of all, for Michigan State, does a loss at Northwestern make them any more dangerous today? I don't think so. I don't think a loss ever helps. There's one notable exception. If they can fight through that disappointment and show that they're a great football team, They'll find a way to win this game today, and they just might find their way to Pasadena without help. There are some fascinating trends surrounding this series, and the one that dates back the longest. The team that has outrushed the other has won all but one of the last 28 meetings. Oh, old linemen love to hear that stuff. That is statistically significant, which brings us to Cedric Irvin, the great running back, number 33 for Michigan State. Jim Herman, the defensive coordinator for the University of Michigan, says this young man has the greatest feet I have ever seen. That's a lot of feet, folks. That's a lot of yards, and that's going to require a great deal of a Michigan defense. Anthony Thomas is ranked third on the depth chart, but is the man who can go the distance for the Wolverines, who overcame their scare last week to win and are in a better psychological condition for this game, I think, in this rivalry. Everybody has looked forward to this one for months. That's how long Spartan Stadium has been sold out. So let's send you from East Lansing to a warm, cozy Mike Tirico in the studio. And just a wee bit quieter here. But we're fired up also. Big game in the Big Ten. Happy to bring it to you on ESPN. We're here for the next ten and a half hours. If it happens in college football, we'll tell you about it. Wisconsin-Minnesota is kicking off over on the deuce right now. Our primetime game on ESPN tonight. Florida State to the site of their only ACC loss. Charlottesville will take on the Virginia Cavaliers at 7 Eastern. Already underway in the Big Ten, Randy Reiner starts for Matt Sherman, throws a touchdown to Tavian Banks. Iowa leads Indiana. Bowling Green, the early lead on undefeated Toledo. In the Big East, both teams score on their opening possessions. Miami of Florida kick the extra point, leaving Temple by one. Rutgers and Pitt are scoreless. Coming up from East Lansing, the fans are ready and so are we. We'll put it on the team. Michigan, Michigan State. The kickoff coming up when you come back on ESPN. It was also chilly, but it was rainy yesterday. Today it's been dry, and it's not going to get much out of the low 40s. It's breezier than it was yesterday, though. And we're just about set for the kick before we get underway. Let's go down and welcome the third member of our crew, Dave Ryan. Dave, thanks very much. You know, all week long here in East Lansing, the emotions have been running to this fierce in-state rivalry, running very high. In fact, we were able to find one of the more timid signs here, this no blue. This uh, definitely not as intense as some of the signs we saw. We couldn't put those on television. The newspapers throughout the state also have been very seriously involved in covering this game, every possible angle leading up to the kickoff. The Detroit Free Press even went as far as to run a statewide poll asking the simple question, who will win today? The overwhelming choice wears maize and blue. But the poll also has two fans are going to root for. That was much closer. Dave and Bill, when it comes to emotion, it is incredible on the field here today. There are a couple thousand Michigan fans here, but the noise of edge definitely belongs to the green and white. As you would expect. Home team in this series has won the last five, but Michigan today about a field goal favorite to remain undefeated, and they hope on target for a potential national title. Michigan wins the toss. They defer. Jay Feely set the kick to either Mark Renaud or Gary Scott. 
And he bounces one low. It will skid all the way through the end zone, and Michigan State takes over from their 20. A very balanced Michigan State offense engineered by Todd Schultz, senior quarterback out of Morris, Illinois. Gould, the fullback, and Cedric Swervin Irvin, a 1,000-yard rusher last year as a freshman, is the tailback. Josh Kerr, their leading receiver, 24 catches, 11 last week. Gary Scott and Octavius Long are the wideouts. And Flozell, the Hotel Adams, a Lombardi semifinalist, also an outlet candidate, with Shaw, Strayhorn, Mason, and Mudge up front. Cedric Irvin dotting the eye. Kyle Rance, the second tight end, went in motion, and Irvin gets the corner turned for 14 yards. The Michigan defense leads the nation in scoring allowed just 8.3 per game. Williams, Renus, and Steele, their only senior. The number two overall defense in the country has just one senior, and Glenn Steele is that man. The linebackers, Hall, Copenhaver, Sword, who had the game ceiling interception, the first of his career against Iowa last week, and Dahani Jones, secondary Weathers, Ray, who had two interceptions last week, Hendricks, and Woodson. And again, it's Irvin for six to the 40, where he's hit by Andre Weathers, and there are multiple markers after the tackle. Short made the tackle. 94, Eric. Our referee today is Jim Kimmerling. 93, Short made the tackle. Good ball. Personal foul on the offense. 15 yards, second down. That foul was on Flozell Adams, number 76. One of the things that can happen in a big game like this is the emotion is so powerful that you do things that you wouldn't ordinarily do. Now, Adams is a is an honors candidate, and he doesn't need to be pushing and shoving. That is a drive killer right there, the first big mistake in a game that could be dominated by emotion when it is not productive. So the Michigan defense now with the upper hand at second and 19 for Michigan State back at their 25-yard line. With Irvin splitting out wide. The give is to Leroy McFadden, a sophomore out of Eden Prairie, Minnesota. Normally listed as the third team tailback for the Spartans. Defensive coordinator Jim Herman, his first year in that job at Ann Arbor, has done a tremendous job, obviously. The statistics bear that out. And when you compare these two defenses, there's not a whole lot of differences to pick. They are clearly the top two in the Big Ten and two of the top in the country. And Charles Woodson going up the crowd, Gary Scott. As Schultz drops back and has Renaud out of the backfield, and he's tripped up immediately by Marcus Ray just across the 25-yard line, and that is where the Spartans will have to kick. Now, the punter for Michigan State, Bill, Paul Edinger, pretty good until this year and has suffered miserably in his sophomore campaign. He's having a terrible time. It's one of those slumps that's inexplicable, but it happens to skilled players. Michigan State needs him to pick it up today. Here's a low kick. And a marker that I don't think they meant to throw uh, as Woodson actually had his own man running into him, James Whitley. It was not a green jersey. James Whitley is a true freshman, and that is a critical mistake. The second big mistake we've seen today, had he knocked that ball loose from his own teammate, it could have been a very serious mistake. The flag should be picked up. There is no foul. Disregard the flag. The officials wisely corrected the error. It was, in fact, Woodson's own man that was in the two-yard zone. Those guys are human. Good decision. Brian Greasy, who had by his own admission the worst half of his career in the first half last week and then recovered with one of his best. To pull it out over the Hawkeyes. Russell Shaw in motion. And not much 
available on the first carry of the day for Michigan. Their offense with Greasy Howard and Chris Floyd, who returns after missing last week because of an ankle he injured against Northwestern. They hope he can go all day at fullback. Jeremy Tooman for the second consecutive week, a career high, seven catches at the game-winning touchdown a week ago. Streets and Shaw are the wide receivers. Backus Hutchinson, a tremendous redshirt freshman from Coral Springs, Florida. Adamy, Zeman, and Jansen. Clarence Williams is the tailback and heads left where Ike Reese brings him down at the 46-yard line. The Michigan State defense, as we said, second in the conference and 12th nationally. Underwood bothered by a strained knee at Northwestern. He does go today. Newkirk Thomas and Robert Smith join him up front. The linebackers, Ledger, Garland, and Ike Reese, a Butkus candidate, only the fourth two-time captain in the history of this program. Amp Campbell bothered by a shoulder will also try to go. Morris, Canoe, and Hill in their secondary. And it's a short third and one for Greasy over the middle. The first connection of the day with his favorite target for the 21st time this year. Jeremy Tooman brings one in, and he's brought down by Hill. Brian Greasy a week ago did something that all quarterbacks must do. They must endure a terrible performance in one half and come back to win in the second half. Tooman finds the seam, good concentration, first down. Maybe the best tight end in the country. Williams breaking a tackle, a nice yardage off right tackle. Eric Morris up from strong safety to make the hit. We had what I'd call a Susan B. Anthony block right there by Shaw, the wide receiver. It didn't look like much. It looked kind of like a quarter, but it was worth a dollar. The Susan B. Anthony dollar just wasn't quite big enough. Shaw wasn't quite big enough for Ike Reese, or that would have popped for a long one there. Well, I'm glad you explained that. Yeah, I, I think that would be crucial to explain. Williams, and he seemed to lose his footing right when he wanted to make his cut. Robert Smith there to bear him, and then making him cut back inside was Underwood. Steve Hutchinson, number 76, who's coming from this spot right here, is one of the fine young linemen that I've seen. He cuts his man down with excellent agility. 293 pounds of quickness and power. So a third and four for Michigan. Their first drive of the day, and we've got whistles, and not hearing the whistle, but trying to look apologetic was Courtney Ledger. Whistles and flags just as the ball was snapped. John Jansen, veteran offensive tackle and offensive captain of this unit, moved prematurely. First big mistake by Michigan, and when, when I say big mistakes, I'm talking about things that stop drives. And Courtney Ledger got away with one here. I think this kind of thing needs to be flagged, especially in an emotional game. Or you could lose a quarterback in a hurry when his back is turned. Courtney didn't mean to do that, but he needs to pull off. So back it up. And now a third and nine with Greasy looking from the shotgun. First tie streets at the 22 of the Spartans. A first down, and the Wolverine drive continues. A 20-yard strike, Greasy to street. Two early impressions. I think Cedric Irvin is going to have trouble with ball security. Brian Greasy is throwing the ball on rhythm. He seems to be at the top of his game today. By streets, a touchdown a week ago. Chris Howard on the carry, normally listed as the starter and driven back from the 20 by Robert Smith. Both these teams build very deep at tailback. We'll see probably all three, Howard, Williams, and Thomas for Michigan. That's right, Dave. And when Michigan State was on offense, we saw two tailbacks in the backfield together which Coach Tranquil predicted for us yesterday, so you can expect to see two at a time when Michigan State has the ball. Now they're leading rusher, but not by much. 
over the freshman Anthony Thomas. He got three. And he gets open and dragged out of bounds at the 14-yard line by Ledyard as we check in at the studio with Mike Tarico. All right, Dave, here's what's going on in the Big Ten right now after the loss at Purdue last week. Good start for Wisconsin. Mike Samuel, pump and dump, 53 yards to Tony Simmons. 22nd career touchdown reception, most by any Badger ever. They lead by seven to Adam Lige touchdowns. And Bowling Green leads undefeated Toledo by seven in Ohio. And Toledo still... The only team to knock off Purdue all season. Third and two, Floyd with the call, and he will be close to the first. Very active, Robert Smith makes another tackle. Robert Smith is number 91 defensive end for the Spartans. He has made play after play, and in this case, he brings up the first fourth and short situation for Michigan today, and they're going to attempt the field goal. Lloyd Carr elected to get Craig Baker out to try a 30-yarder. He is 8 of 10 this year. His longest is 40. Out of Greasy's hold, he has this one up and through. So Michigan on the board first, 8.24 to go. First quarter from Spartan Stadium. ESPN presentation of college football is brought to you by Discus Athletic, the brand that lets you compete on every field. And by Buick. Welcome to Park Avenue. The all-new Park Avenue by Buick. The power of understatement. 90th meeting in the history of this rivalry. Michigan with a 3-0 lead. The short field goal by Baker. And the kickoff specialist, Feely. This time sends one uh, just as deep to Mark Renaud. Nine yards deep, in fact. ESPN continuing its college football coverage tonight at 7 when the number three Seminoles will try to stay unblemished and keep their national title hopes alive. They take on the Cavaliers in an ACC showdown. Tune in tonight from Charlottesville on ESPN. In his third year as the head coach at East Lansing, Nick Saban turned down the New York Giants over the offseason as he much prefers the college game. 17, 12, and one, two bowls, two losses in the postseason, but by far his best unit at five and one and a field goal away from matching Michigan six and zero record coming into this one. Urban, this time unsuccessful in looking for room outside, as is greeted by Tommy Hendricks. Bill, a moment ago you talked about ball security, an issue for Urban. He had a key fumble last week. What specifically does he do wrong? Cedric carries the ball away from his body. That ball should be riveted to his rib cage. When it comes away, as you see, that ball is vulnerable and can be knocked out, just like you just saw him on that very play. That is a dangerous thing, and it will be problems on this day at some point. Urban again going out wide to be matched up with Woodson. They throw underneath, though, and Kyle Lawrence has some room before he's undercut by Woodson at the 40. Just his fourth catch of the season. It goes for 21 yards. First down, Michigan State on the pass. Kyle Rance is the backup tight end. Josh Kerr had a big week last week. And obviously, Schultz is still going to feature the tight ends. First down. He runs a simple State. seam pattern. Or out to the seam. Arrow route, it would be called from the tight end spot. And there was a blown coverage on the Michigan secondary part. And he just about doubles his reception yardage for the season. Off of more out of Troy. Irvin. Michigan last week held uh, the nation's leading rusher, Tavian Banks, under 100 yards. Rob Renis and Josh Williams combining for this hit. Basically, if you take away a 53 yarder by Banks, he did very little damage last week. I was about to say, he got most of it on one play because he runs like the wind. Cedric does not have the kind of speed that Tavian Banks does, but he seems to be more elusive, and he's a bigger guy. He's about uh, 217. He's a big tailback. 
Last year, Michigan's freshman, Michigan State freshman record, 1,067 yards, similar pace so far this year. Schultz is back and chased by Steele, who almost got to him in time for a set. You can almost hear a collective gasp when Schultz goes down. He had three knee surgeries in the last season alone. A very courageous young man. Todd Schultz under pressure here. Josh Williams continues to play well. Had a big game last week. His pass rush technique has improved drastically as we've seen him play this season. His first as a starter in replacement of Ben Huff. Three knee surgeries since July of 96. But he's gone all year. Quick hitter for the first down. As again, they get urban wide, a lot like what Michigan likes to do with their running backs. And it's 12 yards worth. Coach Tranquil is one of the real clever offensive minds in football. And he plans to throw to his running backs more. Irving is an excellent receiver. Here's Gary right here. He looks like a little owl looking up over the ledge there. He got the mind of a clever owl. So one of the things that Michigan's wary about is his first down calls as he mixes them up so well. This time, bread and butter, Irvin up the middle for about seven or eight. Hit of the 40 by Andre Weathers. Travis Reese, number 41, the fullback. Needs to make a good block to make this play go, and he does that right there. Boom! Right in the mouth. Linebackers don't like that. Who does? Fullback. <laughs> Fullback like that. Here of the delivery. Second. And two. Urban cuts back inside. Tripped up by Marcus Rary. Might have gone instead of the 19, 22 yards for Cedric. A good block here. A good block here by Scott Shaw, the offensive captain. Gets Cedric into the clear and look at those feet. Game saving or possibly touchdown saving, I should say. Tackled by number 29, Marcus Ray, who calls himself Ray Rock. Ray Rock had to reach for the toe on that one. Todd Schultz will have to burn the first Michigan State timeout with just under five and a half minutes to go in the first quarter. The Spartans trailing, but driving. Uh, you know, spitting in your eye. I mean, it's it's dirty. I finally realized when I was sitting in class and, and all the students were coming up and say, hey, please be Michigan, please be Michigan. And I see it means so much to them. It's a knockdown, drag out fight, and uh, you know, that's the way we want it, and that's the way it should be. And that's the way it is. That's the way it's been in this first quarter. Of, of similar matchups you've been a part of, Alabama, Auburn, for instance, this reminds you of that at all? You just, it does remind me. You just have to be on the field to understand the excitement. I get so gunned up, I can hardly contain myself. Urban featured on the ground and through the air on this drive which has carried the Spartans inside the 20, and a marker is down as Irvin reaches to 16. That flag is thrown in the vicinity of what we normally expect to be holding calls. Not good news for the Spartans. And on a similar point on the field to where Michigan had the drive killer. Force them to settle for three. Holding on the offense. Ten yards. Spot of the foul. Repeat. First down. It was the big guy, Flozell Adams, who got stood up and resorted to a, a little encirclement, the officials call it, encirclement of the opponent. You must keep your hand. The lost lamp. Adams, the senior who came back because of a promise he made to his uh, now deceased mother to graduate. Could have gone perhaps in the first round of the draft last year. Urban runs right into Dahani Jones, fine inside backer. 
to the studio and update Mike Carrico. Dave, the Charles Woodson of the Big 12 is R.W. McCorners for Oklahoma State. No, he's not as dominating, but he's just as versatile. This guy has an interception, a couple of fumble recoveries this year, a touchdown catch, and this touchdown run is undefeated Oklahoma State, up seven. Yeah, the records are just the same, too. The Bob Simmons, the surprising Cowboys. Second and 18, Irvin again. From motion, out wide. Gary Scott makes the catch, but is uh, downed immediately at the 23-yard line by Sword for Michigan. And here comes third and 13. With the exception of these situations like third and long, Michigan State's gone almost exclusively with two tight ends. But in this case, they came with three wide receivers. And against the zone defense, Scott hooked up. Nice throw and catch. And a chance now for the first down. 42% excellent for the Michigan State offense, converting third downs. But Michigan allows just 28% defensively for the year. Schultz, well protected, almost intercepted by Weathers, intended for Cedric Irvin. It's fun to play defense on those third and 14s. I'm very impressed with both quarterbacks so far. Schultz is operating with efficiency. Nice play right there by Andre Weathers to break it up without putting his hand on the back of the, of the receiver, which could have caused a pass interference call. So on comes Chris Gardner. Nope, fake Bill Buck. Wide open is Urban. Touchdown. game ended on a special teams disaster for Michigan State and this one begins with a special teams surprise on a fake field goal pass from the holder Bill Burke the second team quarterback and now he'll hold it for real and Gardner adds the PAT An electrifying first score of the day for the Spartans. Burt doesn't get to play a whole lot. He's a sophomore from Warren, Ohio, but he's now 12 of 15, two touchdowns. You see right here, 10 Spartans. It is the job of the Michigan defense to recognize that. Somewhere out here is another guy. The rule says he must come within the numbers in order to be legal. Cedric Irvin did that, moved back out wide. Bill Burke makes a perfect throw. Touchdown, Spartans. I mean, you couldn't be more alone than he was. Not in a place like this. That's about as alone as you get. That's an embarrassing thing for the Michigan team and a real emotional lift for the Spartans. So the Wolverines have the challenge of sucking it up and getting past that thing where they gave a touchdown away, essentially. And fitting that Irvin caps it off because the whole drive was just about Paul Cedric Irvin. 7 to 3 Spartans with Clarence Williams, the deep man for Michigan. Gardner, a high short kickoff from the 15 to the 27 goes Williams. We go down to Dave Ryan. Well, Dave, moments ago, the big fake field goal and the touchdown pass to Cedric Irvin. You should have seen the reaction on the Michigan State bench. Complete bedlam here, led by Nick Saban who was going completely crazy with the rest of his team. Now, on the other side, Michigan wondering whether or not Urban was legally lined up for that play. They questioned the linesman on that to make sure it was a legal play for the Spartans. The rule says that every player must come within the numbers prior to the play. Once he's come inside that number, he can move back out, and he's legal. By numbers, you're talking, you're talking about yard I mean, marker, the, literal, the literal numbers on the field, yes. Greasy tried to swing it out to Williams. He may have looked away. Clarence was looking up the field rather than at the ball, anticipating the blow that he was about to receive. Take a look at his eyes. They aren't on the ball. They're facing up the field rather than right into his hands. First rule of catching the ball is to look it in. 
First incompletion for Brian Greasy. On the ground on second and ten for Howard. He spins for about three into the arms of Ike Reese, the senior out of Cincinnati. Ike does that a lot. The Michigan offensive line that has been improving of late, not getting movement up front against this Michigan State defense. Michigan State, a very strong rush defense most of the year. 64 per game, only allowed their first five. And the Northwestern exploded behind Adrian Autry's best game ever for the team of 208. And really turned that thing in the second quarter. Michigan State never recovered. High streets in the first down. In the middle of three defenders at the 37-yard line, one of whom argues uh, Lamar Marshall that streets didn't hang on. But they give him the catch, and the drive continues. Or so we think. Now, this spot actually inside the 37. And this may not be enough. It appeared when he first caught it, it would be. The officials are right on the spot. And generally, they do an excellent job of getting the ball down where it should be put down. And this is about a foot and a half short. And it will, it will require a punt in this situation most likely well you would think but greasy has not made a move to the bench and lloyd cars at now and only at, at this point does he send on the punting unit kind of a pregnant pause where we wondered is he going to go for a fourth and one from his own 37. There was no doubt in Lloyd's mind, I promise you, <laughs> in a game like this. So Jason Vinson, having a good junior year, 42 yards per kick. This one takes a Michigan hop. Urban will let it be killed by Sword at the 21-yard line. In the studio, Mike Tarico. Dave, this update takes us back to Stillwater where it's rainy there. Cedric Urban was wide open for your touchdown. Eddie Brooks pretty wide open here. 20-yard pass from Corby Jones. Missouri, they upset Texas last week. All tied at seven with Okie State. Now the goalposts came down in Columbia last week as they did previously at Stillwater after they upset Texas. So State from their 21-yard line leading 7-3, to 214 in the first. Cross to Mark Renaud, the able backup for Cedric Urban, maybe one yard. At 3.30, ABC will be splitting the country four ways with important October tilts in four conferences. The Buckeyes will be in action at upset by the Northwestern. Colorado, Texas in the Big 12. Washington State quietly continuing to crush teams in search of their first Rose Bowl since 1931. And Clemson, Maryland in the ACC regional action this afternoon on ABC. Michigan State does most of their damage in the first quarter, and then they get significantly less dangerous as the games go on. Schultz has Cedric Irvin. And Woodson has Irvin around the ankles for no gain. Michigan State's last drive, which took him down for that fake field goal, which became a touchdown, was highlighted by the running of Irvin. The passing of Schultz, and then finally the breakup by Weathers prior to the big play for the touchdown. This game will not be won with trickery, but that trick right there sure didn't hurt the Spartans. Down inside the final minute of the first quarter, Michigan State looking at a third and nine, and they go with three wides and nobody in the backfield with Schultz. Incomplete for Urban. Coverage by William Peterson. And Mark Renaud, number 26, is not happy because he was open. Consistently, we are seeing two tailbacks in the game, one being used very often as a split receiver. Edger this time will kick to Russell Shaw. Normally, it's Woodson doing the returning duties. We expect to see 
more Woodson on offense than we've seen all year, and that may mean that they choose to rest him in special team situations. Not a real good effort by Edinger. Russell makes the first man miss, needs a block from Peterson, and reaches midfield before he's knocked back. Just a 35-yard punt. We flash back to one of the memorable uh, additions of this rivalry, 90. Elvis Gerbach with a pump, then Derek Alexander for the touchdown. Then it was Tico Duckett up the middle, 28-21, with two minutes to go for State. Alexander again with 10 seconds left. They go for two. Desmond Howard pulled down, or was he, by Eddie Brown. There was no call, and there was no win for Michigan. 28-27, State. Great field position for Howard to start with the rumble up the middle. And a push forward to the Spartan 45, where Ike Reese leads the green and white contingent on what may be the last play of the quarter. That's really the first time that the Michigan offensive line has gotten a surge up front. Zach Adamy, Steve Hutchinson, the left guard, Zach being the center, got some work done that time. Prior to that, the Michigan State defenders had dominated. Well, as usual, a strong first quarter by the Spartans. After the early Baker field goal, the fake field goal produces a 7-3 Spartan lead. Quarter now, Spartan Stadium. Dave Barnett, Bill Curry, and Dave Ryan. No question, we, we wondered how the Spartans would react to the disappointment from last week. I think we have our, a very definitive answer. They have, have completely our forgotten. We have our answer. There's no hangover. The guys in green came to play. Offset eye on a second and three, and they go reverse for Shaw. Tried to cut it back. Ledyard had it strung out pretty well, and no game. Defensive coordinator for the Spartans, Dean Pease, will these be are pleased. The, these are the plays that defensive coordinators love to see. People staying at home. Courtney Ledyard had contained responsibility, reverse responsibility. He was right there where he was supposed to be. Second quarter is where it all fell apart, though, at Evanston last week. I'll try to avoid a repeat movement and whistle. It was an all-out blitz, and they may have induced one of the linemen for Michigan to flinch a little bit, which is what you must not do. I mean, they were coming. They were coming with about nine of them. That's a good call by Dean Pease. Good aggressive football, forcing the linemen to adjust, and in this case, showing a little lack of poise, which is not unusual in a big game like this. Pease and Saban, who also comes with a defensive background, have engineered a remarkable two-year improvement defensively for State. They've gone from worst to almost best in the Big Ten. They come with a safety blitz. Intended for Williams, who couldn't hang on with Ant Campbell all over him. Big Chris Floyd just showed why Brian Greasy calls him the MVP on the team. That's a safety blitz. Greasy's just getting ready to catch one right in the teeth. Look at that fine block by Chris Floyd. Saves him a big hit. Sorry, Canoe, coming like a rocket. Low snap. But Vinson gets off a beauty, and it will bound on into the end zone. 51-yard effort for Jason Vinson. ESPN2 continues its college football coverage tonight at 6. Damian Craig and the number 11 Tigers in an SEC battle against the Razorbacks. And then at 9, it will be the number 24 Falcons taking on the San Jose State Spartans in a whack showdown. Watch all the action on ESPN2, your home for college football. The Air Force upended for the first time a week ago by Fresno State. They try to get back on track. Barnes again start from the 20. And it's Urban turned back inside by Woodson just long enough. 
for Josh Williams to come roaring over to catch him from behind. And Charles Woodson shows he's human, like most mortals, trying to catch up with Cedric Irvin when those feet are flying as they do with him. Charles missed the tackle, so it's second and five. Well, Williams showed a little quick, though. Some serious speed. Williams has excellent speed. Irvin, and this time, nowhere to go as he's turned back by James Hall, the sophomore outside backer, kind of a combination end backer out of New Orleans. Yeah, they call him a linebacker and a defensive end, which causes the offense to have to sort of guess where he's going to line up. He's a good, strong football player, and he can drop, and he can rush. So on a third and six, Long and Scott both go wide left, and Urban is matched up against Marcus Ray, wide right. And they look to Urban, who's got the first. 13 yards against Ray to the 38. Coaches like this mismatch now, a tailback against a strong safety. As good a football player as Marcus Ray is, he's not the athlete that Cedric Irvin is, and Cedric has excellent hands. He's really showing us versatility in this football game, and he's hanging on to the ball. Well, they pretty much put this first half in his hand. Not, not bad hands to put it in. Every way possible he's contributed. Late flags as McFadden carries, and we wondered whether they would finally flag Josh Williams, who obviously moved, and we'll see if he was drawn up. Defensive line coaches work very hard to teach people like Josh to watch the ball and not be affected by sounds like the quarterback's cadence. In this case, Josh was listening to Schultz when he should have been looking at the football. Offside. On the defense, five yards, repeat, first down. Let's check in with Mike Tirico. Dave, first time in 33 games that Matt Sherman has not started at quarterback for Iowa. He has the thumb injury, Randy Reiner's second. in. He's scored a couple of touchdowns against Indiana. Here's the second to Tim Dwight. Dwight's first TD reception in a conference game this year. So Iowa by 14. Cedric Irvin. And a big pile at the 45, maybe a two-yard pickup. Dwight last week, two memorable kick returns, one on a kick, uh, one on a punt. But Woodson otherwise basically shut him down. He had one catch for seven yards. Well, Woodson wasn't on him all the time, so that, that big matchup that we had anticipated didn't quite materialize. But Dwight certainly shown in the kicking game with two big returns. The biggest... The punt return to close the first half and uh, make Michigan come from 14 back to win it, which they did. They're down early in this one, too. Urban slips two tackles but can't advance any further than the 45. Let's go down to Dave. Well, David Bell, there's good news for Spartan fans. Sparty the statue, located at the approach of the stadium, has been guarded for the last 16 days straight by a group of Spartan fans, making sure no one defaces him, as in painting him maize and blue. That's been the tradition with Michigan fans trying to get to him. There have been two attempts to deface Sparty, a paintball gun drive-by shooting, complete with a masked gunman foiled by the fans. Also, they tried last night to egg the statue, but they missed with their tosses. So Sparty is safe for now, guys. Cedric Irvin can only hope for similar protection. Kind of warms your heart, doesn't it? Almost six for carry so far for Sidney. Schultz will hang one deep for him. He's beaten Copenhaver, the linebacker. Stays in bounds to the 28, where Ray recovers, but it's a 27-yard connection. By and large, the pass protection has been superb. Schultz takes advantage of it, shows excellent pocket movement. We've got another mismatch here with Cedric Irvin on Clint Copenhaver, the linebacker. It's an out and up. Had the throw been a little better, it would have been a touchdown. You have to love Cedric Irvin and his contributions to his team. He's doing everything well. Well, was Copenhaver hung out to dry? Well, he was put in a situation that linebackers aren't accustomed to, and that's what we call these mismatches for. 
Offset eye. Irvin lined up the pullback and pitches to Renaud, but a marker's down. Mark Renaud is knocked out inside the 25-yard line, so a handoff pitch combination. With Irvin lined up in the offset eye at fullback, but we'll see if it's coming back. He just did something I've never seen his cousin Michael do. I've never seen Michael run an option. I've seen him make a lot of big plays. What we're seeing is an option play run by a wing back. In this case, Cedric's lined up at wing back. <laughs> he pitches that ball like an old wishbone quarterback. Here is Gary Tranquil, who is pulling out many of his tricks from the old green bag. But holding spoils this one. I don't, I don't think I've seen Michael Irvin or anybody else for that matter run that particular option. No, you haven't. <laughs> it hasn't existed. In fact, I'm not sure that Gary had that one in his bag. I think that's a brand new trick. Breather for Irvin. Renaud stays in behind Travis Reese. On first and 22 from the eye. And here comes Renaud, a thousand yard rusher two years ago. Chased out by Sam Sword at the 33. Sam Sword with his first ever interception. He's a junior from Saginaw, but he picked a terrific time to get into that column. It ended what He's looking like it might be the game-winning drive by Iowa inside a minute to go. Also began that game by recovering a key fumble, and he is all season long been their leading tackler. Sam's an impressive guy, and uh, Santa Claus is out a little early this year. On second and 15, play action. And Renaud buried by Andre Weathers. Andre has really been a pleasant surprise to his coaches this year. He has come on to be an outstanding, aggressive tackler. There was no question that he'd be a good coverage man, but he had not shown this kind of aggressiveness in previous years. Andre sat out last week with a shoulder, but they pronounced him fit to go. Tremendous job by him so far with higher profile people around him and, and what a lot of people consider the best defensive backfield in the country. On third down over the middle and Ray has his third interception of the season. They have both come in the last two weeks. And he has his third in the last two meetings against the Spartans. There was good protection, but that's called a robber coverage, and the robber robbed. It was Marcus Ray, and he came up with a pick. He has six career picks, and half of them have come against his biggest rival in state. It's been its absolute peak along the Red Cedar River in East Lansing. Would you say that's beautiful tree-wise? Yes. You can't get a whole lot better than that tree-wise. <laughs> Cool but dry today in the low 40s, breezy. And the Ray interception turns it over to Greasy and Company at their 36 yard line, trailing 7 to 3, 9 33 in the second quarter. Williams. Jeremy Tooman holding on to his block just long enough for Williams to near a first down pickup, knocked out by Reese. When we say robber, we mean a man who's hanging near the middle of the field usually without a specific assignment. And in this case, Marcus was hanging back there. Schultz did not see him, and he actually took it away from his own man. It was a really, really excellent call by Jim Herman, the defensive coordinator. I was just going to say, if, if Ray hadn't gotten it, Jones might have. Yeah, so Schultz I missed two might. white jerseys. Williams does have enough for the first, and Chris Floyd, powerful 230-yard, 230-pound fullback, pushes forward to the 50. Uh, Check-in now with Mike Tarico. Mike. 
And Iowa continuing to pour it on Indiana. Not Rymers this time, but Tim Dwight goes in the air off the reverse. 64 yards, Gibson with the touchdown. Indiana just missed a field goal, and the Hawkeyes lead by 21. Meantime, Missouri has scored and recovered a fumble on the kickoff and added a field goal. 17 straight points, they lead by 10. Big surprise, I guess no surprise, that Tim Dwight discovers yet another talent. And Bill, we've seen for about a quarter and a half an awful lot of these procedure calls. One of the things that you really have to work on. Illegal snap on the offense. Five yards, second down. So what does that mean? An illegal snap means that the center pulled the ball partially up to the quarterback's hand, then completed the snap. That is not a legal snap. It must be one consistent movement from the center's hand to the quarterback. Now, we didn't see the movement there. It was so subtle that only the umpire could see it, but he's right on the spot. That's his call. Zach Adamy, mostly a guard until this year. Howard out of the backfield. Reese, there to spill him at the 45. Campbell posted him and Reese posted him. Campbell came up, forced the issue, made him cut back inside, and with hustle like you get from Ike Reese, he's right there for the play. That's great defense. That's team defense. Reese now has five tackles on the game. Well, given 64 on the year to lead the Spartans. And a third and 11 for Greasy. They come after him, and it is over streets. He had no time. Thanks to Ledyard and Tyrone Garland. A missed blitz pickup assignment here. We'll see who comes clean. Everybody came clean. Garland and Ledyard came clean and were able to force the issue on Brian Greasy. He didn't have time to set his feet. Very high kick by Vinson, which Irvin elects the fair catch at the 19th. 35-yarder into the wind, midway in the second. These discus athletic students of the game, first of all from Michigan, Sophomore Jeff Poultry, their long snapper with a 3-2 in kinesiology. And for Michigan State, offensive tackle Dave Mudge, a 3-2-5 in PE and exercise science. Discus Athletic, proud to donate $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund on behalf of these athletes. Those long snappers are bright guys, don't you think, David? You would say so. Because <laughs> you're one. And you used to be one. Spartans from the 19th. Urban for perhaps a yard. Marcus Ray saying he took it over. Ian Gold saying he took it away, but after the whistle. Urban has had the running and passing game all on his shoulders in this first half. Involved in 17 plays worth 134 yards. Compare that to Michigan as a group. He's uh, almost outgained him two to one. Well, they say that one who sings his own praises usually does so without accompaniment. But uh, Cedric has a lot of accompaniment. Everybody seems to like Cedric, unless you have to play against him. Built off the play fake, and the open tight end is there again, and it's Kyle Rance. His second catch today, and just his fifth of the year, 18-yarder. Rance is a great big target. It simply runs straight down the field. It's a timing play. One of those things that takes hours and hours of work together to concentrate. That's why the execution worked. Well, we came in with a night for Josh Kerr, who had 11 catches one week ago. I haven't looked to him yet. Irvin to the 42. And three more with the tackle by Hall. Much of the time, both these teams are going with two tight ends. That last play, Kerr and Rance were on the field. 
with Kerr lined up in a wing position, which makes for a strong blocking at the point of attack off tackle. Grants, until this game, just a, an afterthought in the Michigan State passing game. Kerr, the leading receiver for the year, but they haven't looked to him yet. Schultz, just before he is chased out of bounds, overthrows that one in the general area of Rance. It was Rob Renus, the nose tackle, giving chase. And it'll be third and seven. That was a naked bootleg, which means Schultz comes out there with nobody to protect him. I'm a little surprised that Coach Tranquil would do that with the condition of Schultz's knees being what it is. See Coach Tranquil again there. Well, we missed him. Missed our chance to draw on Gary. <laughs> By now, I think we uh, we know who Gary Tranquil is. One of the really outstanding offensive minds in football. Wolverine still blitz, and it comes from the corner, incomplete for Urban. Woodson coming that time on the corner blitz. It got picked up by Renaud, but Schultz still unable to hit the target. The Spartans will have to kick. A little West Coast offense there with a bunch of crossing routes on man coverage, but not enough time to get the receiver open. Paul Edinger has uh, seen his average per kick drop by almost four and a half per effort from a pretty solid freshman year. And they come up the middle and almost get a hand on this one. It is Woodson. It is a clip on Peterson. And Michigan will have horrible field position. A flagrant clip by number 23, William Peterson. The kind of thing that simply cannot be allowed. Excellent call by the official. And you're right, Dave, the field position will be very poor as a result. Derek Deller, 20 from Michigan State, the man that got clipped by William Peterson. And so the Wolverine March will start from their five, trailing by four. The Mason Blue next to the green and white. Halloween come early to East Lansing and Spartan Stadium on its feet as Michigan starts from its five and breaking through the middle. For a nice chunk goes uh, Chris Howard, Reese another tackle, down to Dave Ryan. Well, Dave and Bill, this Michigan-Michigan State game isn't the only meeting between these two big rivals this weekend. Tonight, the Spartan Wolverine hockey teams hit the ice at Yost Arena in Ann Arbor. It's a big game, too. The Spartans are second-ranked. The Wolverines are number eight in the country. Last year, the team split during the regular season, but the Wolverines looking good this year. They've won all but one game at home over the past two years. Howard with a couple of cutbacks and in the clear. Run down and almost fumbles it after Ray Hill catches up with him at the 33-yard line, but he hangs on and it's 51 yards, his longest run by 21 yards this season. An enormous, enormous momentum shift right here, executed by the Michigan offense against the Michigan State defense. Coming off that goal line first with a 10-yard run for a first down, and now a 50-yard run by Chris Howard, who almost exposes the ball and has it knocked loose. Very fortunate that he ended up with it there. Very. When you see a guy lose it that way, he almost never gets it back. That was a smart play by Ray Hill. First carry of the day by the freshman. Anthony Thomas out of Winfield, Louisiana, who is listed third team behind both Howard and Williams, but has the two best rushing days of the year for Michigan. 129 last week and 122 against Baylor. Both these teams have three outstanding tailbacks, and we'll get to see all six of those great backs today. In fact, we already have. Them. We have. Nobody should get tired today. That's a nice changeup when you go from Howard to Williams and then you come with the package of, of power and speed and Thomas trying again into the arms of Courtney Ledyard. 
Junior out of Shaker Heights, Ohio, former Cleveland Area Player of the Year. A disruption call by Dean Pease, defensive coordinator for Michigan State. Mike Austin, number 25, middle linebacker, disrupts the play. Courtney Ledger, number 53, the weak side linebacker, cleans it up. Third and long. The ability to convert third down plays into first downs will be a crucial factor in this game. Timeout, Michigan. This one is crucial enough for Greasy. I want to talk it over with Lloyd Carr. With 3.57 in the first half. Coming up on a third and six for Michigan, and we're also coming up on the National Car Rental Halftime Report with Mike Tirico. And the guys are just a couple hundred yards away from here, the game day crew. Fowler, Corso, and Herb Street. On a third and six, you normally think that guy right there in the middle, Jeremy Tooman, would be the target. Jeremy Tooman, number 80, the tight end, quite likely. Well, you know what? He's not in the game, so I don't think he'll be the target. I'm surprised to see it. Williams instead. There were penalty flags down, and Williams gets only half what they needed, but we'll see if perhaps Michigan State gets called for offsides here. Charles Woodson was in the game as a decoy. I believe there was a formation mistake by the University of Michigan. The rule says you must have seven on the line of scrimmage. I beg your pardon. Michigan State lined up offside. A time and time again in these emotional games, mistakes are made that are not normal with a veteran team. On third and seven to have a defensive lineman a line off sides is what we would call a cardinal sin. Woodson stays in and now heads out along with Floyd Tooman. Enters along with Aaron Shea, the other tight end, on a third and two. Howard and a first down to keep it going for Michigan. And they ran right behind Jeremy Tooman. Ran the two tight ends on late so that Michigan State couldn't adjust their personnel. A very, very wise tactical move by Mike DeBoard, the offensive coordinator for Michigan. Watch Aaron Shea, 36, lead up in the hole. He actually gets deflected, but Howard does some good tough running for the first down. Michigan on first down today, fairly predictable. Marcus Knight in the game goes in motion. Another run on first down, and Howard has gouged out about another five down the other 15. Chris Floyd is a real factor in this game. We showed him picking up a blitz a while ago on all these isolation type runs by the tailbacks. The fullback is the lead blocker. Number seven. Big Chris leading up in there is a is a load. Injury plagued all last season held to just 30 carries and uh, the same true for his senior year coming off a bad ankle. They give him a chance to tilt it himself. Nice fall forward to the 11, where it's going to be third and less than one. We go to the studio, Mike Tirico. After missing a second makeable field goal, Alabama watches Ole Miss walk right down the field. John Avery's over 100 yards already. Touchdown here. Ole Miss by 14 over the Crimson Top. Wow, LSU last week, Alabama this week. Mississippi rolling. This will be... For Michigan, third and right at one. Right at the two-minute mark, remaining second quarter. Knight is right. Streets was left. Greasy up the middle, and a lot more than you usually expect on a quarterback sneak. It is first and goal for the Wolverines from the eight. Michigan State's defense got caught in a split middle look right then with two, two techniques. Or defensive tackles lined up on the guards, and if Brian Greasy had kept his head up, he would still be running. He would have <laughs> run that right into the back of the end zone. He didn't realize it. He was expecting to be hit. Shockingly easy. Yeah. 
Howard. Maybe the six. Most of the critical yardage, Bill, this drive right between the tackles, right up the middle, what has opened up all of a sudden. Good work, and it's not a sudden thing. It's good hard work by Zach Adamy, Chris Zeman, and Steve Hutchinson as they have pounded away at those good defensive linemen and linebackers of Michigan State. What we've got is a rock'em, sock'em, big-time, Big Ten football game. Michigan inside the 20 has been turned away without points just once all year and they usually don't have to settle for three howard breaking a tackle and near the one the red zone has been a very fertile area for the michigan team this year they're 27 out of 28 when it comes to generating points 20 times they've scored touchdowns dead ball personal foul on the defense half the distance first down that's demetrius underwood who is a little bit riled up. Well, we had a long talk with Coach Nick Saban about this kind of thing yesterday. He, he does not allow cheap shots or trash talking. He was sick about the insinuation that his team was doing that, and now here's one of his better players who's getting into the extracurricular activity well and it cost them down close to the goal line but the guy who made first contact was John Jansen from Michigan yeah, but the guy who retaliates always gets called always and in this case too so the second time out for Michigan 48 seconds as the Wolverines try for the lead First and goal from the one. Dave Bryan, what's up with Underwood? Well, guys, a moment ago, uh, Ike Reese was screaming to get Underwood off the field before that last play. Apparently, his emotions had gotten away from him, Dave. Well, Ike trying to assert a little senior leadership. Too late. Reese, another sneak. Touchdown, Michigan, completing a 95-yard drive. There is no finer feeling for an offensive lineman and to take the football 95 yards, mostly with running plays, might have been all runs. I, I, was there a pass completion in the entire drive? That was a beautiful drive for the Wolverines. A whole lot of pushing and shoving going on between these two units, the Michigan offense, the Michigan State defense. It's a good, tough football game. Baker's extra point completes. The all-brown 95-yard drive, and it's 10-7 Michigan in a suddenly quiet Spartan Stadium. Check in with Mike Tarico. All right, Dave, a reminder coming up in a little bit. It is the National Car Rental Halftime Report. We'll show you how Iowa's bouncing back from the loss to Michigan last week. Holy Toledo, can the Rockets stay perfect? Also Oklahoma State, their story. And for those who didn't have enough money for the scalpers, they'll be hanging out with Chris Lee and Kirk outside Spartan Stadium. All that coming up on the National Car Rental Halftime Report. Guys? All right, Mike, what a different feeling for Lloyd Carr compared to this point in the game a week ago when he was about to fall behind 21 to 7 on the big punt return by Tim Dwight. Now with 47 seconds to go, he is ahead 10 to 7. I'd say there's a quantum difference, and not only is he ahead, but the way Michigan got ahead, 
The linemen are over there, the offensive linemen from Michigan, high-fiving, hugging, slapping each other upside the headgears. They just got motivated for the rest of this day and perhaps for the rest of the year. A 95-yard drive in this setting with all the emotion in this stadium is a big deal to the big guys up front. Longest drive of the year for Michigan. Jay Feely. Keeps it low into the wind. And it is Gary Scott on the return, undercut at the 22. By Tate Shansky. Dadrian Taylor, number 28, made that hit. Thursday, the weekend kickoff show presented by Coors Light will get you started. It'll be at 7.30 Eastern, then a critical test for the undefeated Tar Heels. Will they look ahead at the November 8th showdown with Florida State? The Yellow Jackets will be ready. A big Thursday night game on ESPN this week. Ray Bly and the Tar Heel defense, one of the few that can match numbers with that group. Got to watch those Yellow Jackets, Dave. Always. Two timeouts for the Spartans. Irvin. And they hit by Steele to the 24. And apparently have no mind to use either of the two timeouts as we take down under 30 seconds. Well, fans sometimes just don't understand why head coaches run the clock out at the end of the half. But you look at this thing, you've been working all day long. You've managed to score one touchdown. Why are you going to score one in 30 seconds when you got to go 75 yards? Draw play for Irvin. Doesn't fool anybody, and he makes about three totally on his own as the final three seconds of the first half tick off at Spartan Stadium. Spectacular work by Irvin. He has their only points on a spectacular fake field goal pass from Bill Burke, but the late drive by Michigan gives them a 10-7 halftime lead. Mike? Only way the Spartans in the end zone is off the... Uh, fake field goal earlier so really no surprise that this Michigan defense continues to play good football Michigan leading by three at the break here on ESPN as we welcome you to halftime coming up lots to talk about including Minnesota showing up well again in the Big Ten a bunch of missed extra points a game snowed out undefeated in trouble plus running backs Oklahoma's Demond Parker getting set to get it in gear and Iowa's Tavian Banks how's he doing against Indiana scores and highlights up next Today, I scored that long drive by Michigan. Michigan State led by four and had totally dominated statistically. They really had, and Cedric Irvin is even better than I thought he was, and I thought he was pretty good, and he was used in a way that nobody could have suspected. But the biggest single factor was that drive, 95 yards coming off the goal line by Michigan as they had it at their own five, a 10-yard gain, then a 51-yard gain. Something you don't expect to see against the Michigan State defense. And then a major mistake in a personal foul situation close to the goal line, which set up the quarterback sneak for the touchdown. It was just a little too easy and a big morale factor. What that uh, capped was, as it turns out, the longest drive of the season by the Michigan offense. The 95-yarder, Howard, the big 51-yarder, to get it going. And that's where we are, 10-7. to 7. Let's check in with Dave Ryan. Well, guys, the overriding theme for each coach, mistakes. Both Lloyd Carr and Nick Saban talked about penalties and execution. That was the big key for the second half. For Lloyd Carr, they really want to try to maintain a stranglehold on what Cedric Irvin can do in the field. They've got to pursue him better. And as they say, with the old Michigan defense and coordinator Jim Herman, get 11 hacks to the ball. And that's what's got to happen to stop Cedric Irvin in the second half. Dave, Cedric Irvin carries 14 times for 66 yards. He catches six of uh, the 11 completions and totals all but 48 of the Michigan State yardage from that half. Second half begins with a Williams return and flags as Williams is down at the 18-yard line. And we might have uh, the, the illegal block here on Todd Brooks, number three for Michigan. Technique mistake here by Clarence Williams. When you catch a punt or a kickoff, and especially a kickoff, you want to catch it coming forward so that your momentum is up the field. Clarence caught that stepping back, which kept him from getting a good quick start. He was tackled quickly, and in addition to that, there will be a penalty. 
first half statistics evened up quite a bit because of the Michigan drive. First downs even, rush yards. Big advantage for Michigan. And remember, the team that wins the rush yard battle has won 27 of the last 28 times in this rivalry. Urban, 141 yards rushing and receiving. As to the nine-yard line goes Chris Howard for Michigan. Dean Pease, the defensive coordinator from Michigan State, is already making a statement to Michigan. We're going to have eight up there in the box. You're not going to have seven folks to run against. They're in a 3-D coverage, or it could have been a man-free with a free safety, but there were eight people up there to defend the run, which is usually one tackler too many. Howard still at the 12. Jace Saylor, number 80, all the way across the field, showing excellent pursuit. He's a backup defensive end to Demetrius Underwood. Now, I don't know if Demetrius is out of there because of the penalty or because he's nicked. Good play by Saylor. Well, Demetrius standing on the bench at the 26-yard line as Saylor, the true freshman, from well, McHenry, Illinois, gets a series, and it's third and seven. Draw play. Clarence Williams just to the line of scrimmage, and he's wrapped up there by Robert Newkirk and Robert Smith for Michigan State. Robert Newkirk, number 62, is a big load up there in the middle. I imagine the D-line coach got in his face a little bit along with those other defensive linemen because of that long drive at the end of the first half. They have picked it up a notch for sure. Vinson, great first half numbers, and now turns around and gets the kick with the win. William Peterson is confused. The true freshman needed to be in tight, and they finally get him there. And another excellent kickbacks, Urban to his 40. But State starts in outstanding shape after a 47-yard boot. Irvin, one highlight after another in the first half. He made some believers. And two, Irvin! The fake field goal by Bill Burke. Nobody for Michigan picking him up. That got them their only touchdown. Very active in the uh, air as well. Six catches, as we said, to go with 14 carries for 66 yards. And there's a lot of difference in lining up at tailback and going out wide and looking like a polished wide receiver. Which apparently runs in the family. Irvin up the middle to the 44. Sword combining with Dahani Jones on the tackle. Sam Sword is also the guy that hemmed him up on that punt return. Michigan has been reasonably good in special teams this year, but last week really got burned on a punt return. Urban throwing a shoe and has just a couple of seconds to try and get it ready again. But at least he knows where to go to do it. Too many people get in the huddle to do that or stay out of the huddle. Scott goes in motion. Urban thought about dancing to either side and decided to stay right up the middle. Williams made the tackle. Michigan State in the uh, first half a much more effective group 24 points per half compared to their second half out there well that's a little bit skewed because they have beaten some people badly and really didn't try to score much in the second half and they have to hope that today they can reverse that trend against an opponent that's uh, considerably tougher than the others they face Urban again going wide on third and four. And Schultz throws this one away right into the arms of Andre Weathers, who gets his first interception of the year and brings it back nine. Todd Schultz trying to throw the ball away. There's a rule. You pull your quarterback aside. You say, son, if you're going to throw the thing away, throw it in the 10th row of the seats. Don't throw it so some great athlete like Andre Weathers can leap off the ground and pluck it. 
That has happened numerous times. Quarterback comes back and says, Coach, I thought I threw it high enough. Well, not quite. Andre looking plenty healthy, having good nursed time. the shoulder last week. Good time for a play action here and try for a big one. Big Anthony Thomas takes two Spartans to ride him down. Ray Hill at just 185 pounds required the help of Ike Reese. As good as Michigan's been running the football, those safeties are stepping up in there, filling. That would have been a superb time to fake it up in there, pull it down, and throw the post. Now it's second and long, and um, if Coach DeBoer decides to throw, there won't be anybody surprised. Now they've uh, stayed very conservative in their play calling. Contrast that to Tranquil, who's pulled out all his stops for Michigan State. Look how much time Greasy has and still doesn't get it off. And he's sacked back at his 47-yard line by Robert Smith, who now has eight on the year to lead Michigan State. So you can credit the secondary of Michigan State and the linebackers with that sack. That's what we would call a coverage sack. Everybody was wrapped up. Brian Greasy wisely pulls the ball down here. There's nobody to throw to, so rather than force it, he takes the loss. I would have preferred to see him run straight ahead and see if he could get it back near the line of scrimmage. Charles Woodson, safety blitz, in the game. And a flag as there was contact near the 40-yard line. Ray Hill was there in coverage. Not only was Ray there in coverage, but Ray just saved a touchdown. Sometimes you take a penalty so that you don't give up six points. Ray was beaten clearly, and he just grabbed a hold. I would have done the same thing. Of course, I wouldn't have been out there because I don't <laughs> run as fast as Ray. But this is an excellent inside move by Streets. Ray knew he was gone, so he just grabbed the hole and said, well, we'll line up and play with a first down at the 40 instead of uh, lining up to try to block an extra point. Bill, senior from Detroit, who's been a starter since game two of his sophomore year, might get another year. He can come back as a graduate student if... He gets his degree within four years, and that's a possibility. Lost a year because of academics. Might get it back. Trying to cut it back was Clarence Williams, tackled by Newkirk. Let's hear from Mike Tarico. Mike. Five unbeatens knocked off last week. A couple in trouble. Oklahoma State down 17, and Toledo now trailing Bowling Green. Bob Nimitz. Rolling and throwing, Terry LaVille, 72-yard touchdown. Bowling Green has a six-point lead over Toledo. All right, Mike, here 10-7 to Michigan, driving up three, having established their ground, and Greasy just occasionally having to go to the air, which he'll try to do here. Campbell coming, corner blitz. Nice catch, ankle high by Ty Streets. Another nice move and catch by Streets. I believe that ball was deflected, which requires real concentration by the wide receiver. Streets, the second man here, hooks up. That is not easy to do. The ball was tipped. He plucks it right off the turf so that they come up third and five. Reese's favorite targets have been two men in the running backs most of the year, but Streets asserting himself today. And it's Williams. Great balance. Keeps it going inside the 10 and finally knocked out of bounds. That's an incredible play by Clarence Williams. That kind of balance is so rare and so difficult. Ray Hill had a beat on him. Ray Hill's a fine football player. He couldn't come down with him. Number 10, in excellent position to make the play. Look at this balance. That is determination and athletic ability. He had three excellent chances to go down and just refused. 26 yards. And first and goal from the eight for Michigan. Anthony Thomas, not much, if anything. Devario Carter, 95, the backup defensive tackle. 
out of Detroit made the first contact. Real good time to throw the football on first down. First down at the eight and a half yard line. With Michigan State anticipating the run, Michigan could have faked it up in there and might have gotten a quick one. But we really have the strong feeling now that Carr and, and DeBoer feel like hey, the ground game's going to be enough. Well, well it's understandable, up. certainly Maybe. understandable. Northwestern proving that point last week. Another in a string of offsides or procedure penalties. Yeah, and I'm not going to guess on this one. I was so sure the last time of what it was. We'll see. Still second and goal, but this time it'll come from the 13. False start on the offense. Five yards, second down. That's what I thought it was. Should have said was, so. <laughs> I'm not guessing again. I was so sure the last time. It's a young group up front for Carr. The only senior offensive lineman is the center, Adamy. He's got on the left side, red shirt freshman, Akis and Hutchinson, Zeman a sophomore, Jansen a junior on the right side. But you know what? They can't be young anymore. They've been playing too long. They've got to quit making mistakes like that. Chris Howard just to the 11th. You get about halfway through the season, you tell your men, look, you're not young anymore. You've been playing half the year. I don't want to hear young. I want you to execute. Well, now, third and goal to the 11-yard line, and this is where Greasy has found Tooman so often a little rollout. Tooman's ability to, to slip open has been a problem ever since their opener. The, the shocking victory uh, over Colorado, shockingly easy. Yeah, Jeremy he's a, starting off left side. He's a big, fast guy. He runs corners well. He runs hooks extremely well. But they stay on the ground, and that surprises no one. Least of all, Mike Austin, who greeted Howard about when the ball was handed off to Chris Howard. Austin was too quick. Austin's a middle linebacker, number 25. He shoots the gap here. This is a mistake by the offensive center. Zach Adams should have seen that coming and peeled back to keep him from getting penetration. So Craig Baker on. He'll try a 30-yarder. Greasy with the hold. And he is two for two. And for the year, 10 out of 12. Just under six minutes to go. Third quarter, Michigan, 13 to 7. A day in East Lansing, Michigan that just screams autumn and, and football. 13 7, Michigan, with 5.58 to go in the third quarter as we await Jay Feely's kick. Keep in mind, the Michigan defense has not allowed a second half touchdown, and they haven't allowed a single point in the fourth quarter. So if Michigan had ended that drive with a touchdown the way this season has gone you think maybe that puts it away the way the Michigan defense has played but they stay ultra conservative settle for the six point lead. Beely's done a terrific job avoiding returnable kicks today. And Renaud brings this one back 18 yards down to Dave. Well, Dave and Bill, many people call number 90, George Webster, one of the greatest players ever to come out of the state of Michigan. Webster, unfortunately, now is in Houston, Texas, suffering from cancer. And Michigan State people have done the best they can to try to raise money. In fact, they've auctioned off two tickets, Section 9, right at the 50-yard line. They also have collection bins with the number 90 all throughout the stadium. People are urged to donate as much as they possibly can to help fight huge medical costs that George Webster is now battling, along with his life, down in Houston, Texas. Yeah, Dave, they were hoping to raise perhaps $100,000 toward that campaign today. George Webster is one of the greatest players that I ever saw, and I had the privilege of being on the team with his former teammate, Bubba Smith. Bubba, one of my best friends with the Baltimore Colts, used to spend extra time to help me improve as a player, and he always spoke so highly of George. So, George, if you're watching, 
We're all pulling for you, buddy, and we're in your corner. He's watching. Irvin brought down by Sword after one. Michigan State more effective through the air. Michigan almost totally abandoning the air game. But they're the ones on top. Well, procedure again against Michigan State. Let's check in with Mike Tirico. Over on the deuce, Minnesota playing well against Wisconsin. Quarry Sauter, 11-yard touchdown to Greg Nelson. Gophers lead by one. They have the ball again, third and goal at the Wisconsin three. David. Gophers by one. That, that sounds familiar. Heard that a lot last week. Yeah, you sure did. And uh, had they been able to hold on, it would have been one of the biggest victories in the history of the program. Up, they're both losing to Penn State by one, but they cost the Nittany Lions number one. As uh, the carry by Irvin out to the 22. The Michigan State offensive philosophy is such that they really open up when they get to about the 40 yard line. Coach Tranquil, for all his offensive brilliance, doesn't take many chances deep in his own territory, and wisely so. Very tranquil on the left. Those were three wideouts needing seven on third down. And markers are down where you expect holding. As Schultz makes sure that one can't be intercepted. Yeah, I don't have to guess this time. Flozell Adams is having a very hard time. His ankle must be bothering him. James Hall went by him like he was shot out of a cannon and the big guy had to grab on just a little bit. Lozell injured that ankle in their opener and has tried to downplay it all year but he finally admitted this week it's maybe 90 percent back. Well his coaches the penalty has declined. His coaches have great admiration for his perseverance and his toughness, but he simply isn't able to move at his normal quickness, and that has hurt him a, a great deal today. So the Spartans unable to move it. Edger will kick to Woodson. Always fun to watch this guy number two. This again into the wind, and so Woodson has to come up. And as has happened so often this year, the Michigan defense forces the punt and turns it over to their offense near midfield, just the 33-yarder. Next time I'll get two rooms. See you soon. For reservations, call 1 800 800 8000. Super 8 proudly offers the quality and reliability of the ATT network at most of our locations.
can't believe that. Is she actually dozing? No, she's meditating. She's trying to pull her team through. I don't. She looks like she's a Miami Hurricane fan. First down production by Michigan today has been outstanding. I felt like that it would be the most important factor in the game to bring up third and short. They're doing a heck of a job with it. Clarence Williams, his turn in the tailback rotation. Spins for about six yards to the 46, and that's about what they've averaged on first down. They've averaged 6.8 yards, which is really astounding when you consider that Michigan State is second in the Big Ten in defense and one of the outstanding run defenses because Michigan has run the ball virtually every play on first down today. And this being such a typical Big Ten game, the more third and short you get, Or you like your eye. That one intended for Aaron Wright, and Ike Reese had it in his hands and had 50 yards of nothing ahead of him. A very serious mistake by Brian Greasy, who needs to thank Ike Reese for not plucking this ball. Now, Ike's disappointed with himself, but it would have been a very tough chance. The ball was actually thrown a little bit outside, and I know what happened. Brian thought that Ike was going to come on the blitz. Ike pulled off and was able to bat the ball down. Said after last week, the young guys thought the season was down the drain. It was his job to get him back and ready. And he's done a pretty admirable job of that. Incomplete intended for Williams. That was another attempt at the flood route with Williams in the flat coming across. Brian Greasy wisely threw it in the dirt because it was well covered by Ray Hill, number 10. That was a very important stop by the Michigan State defense. Irvin at the 10-yard line. And very high, not quite a shank by Vincent. Doesn't get much of a bounce either, and it'll be down by Aaron Shea at the 19th. But by far his shortest effort of the day, just 27 yards. Three minutes to go, quarter number three. Sticking years, maybe ever here, going upwards of $800 to get inside Spartan Stadium. Where it's 13 to 7 Michigan. Michigan State from their 19 yard line. Play fake by Schultz. Chased by Hall and may have gotten his arm as he brought it forward and it is an incomplete pass Joaquin Fazell hopped on it hoping it would be rule of thumb once again James Hall is able to beat Flozell Adams off the corner with just a straight outside bull rush and time begins to become a factor with the Spartans not so much from the game but from getting something going offensively they had it going in the first quarter, and since then, they've been held to three first downs. Definitely the arm going forward. Schultz now 0 for his last five. The arm was going forward. A good call by the official. Urban stayed in as if to block, and then runs into his own blocker, which holds him to no gain. The reason he ran into his own blocker is because Ian Go, number 20, Backup inside linebacker is in the game for Dahani Jones, forced him out of the lane that he wanted to run in and forced him to run into the blocker. Excellent coverage, recognition by Ian Go. And Cedric Irvin may have banged up his left wrist, comes out of the huddle and heads toward the sideline, kind of shaking it. Well, you don't get the kind of respect from your teammates and coaches that Cedric has unless you're a tough guy. So I suspect we'll see him back very shortly. Out for the moment, replaced by Mark Renard. Just three at 10 today on third down. Renard left inside of Scott. Long is right. Schultz just before Frizzell got him. And the leaping interception by Woodson, who got a foot down somehow inbounds. 
James Hall once again applying the pressure. And once again, Schultz is trying to throw the ball away. He has no idea that Charles Woodson can jump 15 feet in the air, come down acrobatically, get his foot inside this football field. Folks, you can watch football a long, long time before you see another play like that. Oh, man. Uh, of all the highlight plays he's put together, that is right up there with his best. And he's now number two all time in Michigan interceptions. He's halfway through his junior year, his fourth of the season. They don't throw at him that much. So to get four interceptions, he has to make plays like that. Now, I'll tell you what, I, this would be a great time to put it up, but I suspect that Michigan will be conservative because three points is huge right here. From the 21, they go to Howard, who cannot escape the ankle tackle of Courtney Ledger. The reason three points is huge right here is that there's a six-point lead currently, and nine points is a touchdown plus two more points, which means you can't catch up with a touchdown and a two-point conversion. So I suspect that we'll see Michigan be conservative and, if necessary, settle for the three. They'd love to have the seven, but they might settle for the three here. Howard to the 18. Let's hear from Mike Tirico. Mike. Well, in the vein of great players in the Big Ten, as you saw that one by Woodson, how about this one by Tim Dwight? Second punt return for touchdown in as many weeks. 92 yards. He's thrown a touchdown pass, caught a touchdown pass, and a punt return for a TD. First man to do that in major college football in 11 years. Scott Schwede, Syracuse, 86. Well, I thought last week was his best. This one I think he would be better for Tim Dwight. I'd just like to see Woodson and Dwight do some one-on-one -on -one basketball or some good gracious athletic ability. Third and eight. And you called it. Can't get any more conservative than that. Well, with good reason. With good reason. They need this field goal here. The way they play defense, and when you look at their fourth quarter record, which you have already reminded the fans of, then you know that this field goal is big. The bad news is that they put it on the hash that is most difficult for a right-footed kicker. And this will be a 38-yarder for Baker, who's two for two. This is a tough angle. Missed it. Wide left. That's what happens from the right hash so many, many times to a right-footed kicker. Another thing is that the snap didn't come back there with the kind of velocity that you really want, and the timing of the holder and the kicker were somewhat affected. Only the third miss this ball. season by Baker. That ball needs to come back there in a spiral. This is a wobbler. Snap inside to the holder, off the right hash. Invariably, it will be pulled too far to the left. That's what happened with Baker. Technique is so critical in these small parts of football. So the, the lead remains six. Nothing off the Woodson interception. And Renaud, and not Urban. Still the tailback for the Spartans to Hottie Jones, who's led Michigan and tackles each of the three games since he replaced the injured Eric Mays. Makes the tackle here as the third quarter comes to an end. Magical individual effort by Woodson does not lead to points, and so it's still 13-7 Michigan. Fourth quarter from East Lansing. Great news for the Spartans. Irvin back on the field. Dave Ryan, what happened to him? Yeah, Dave, as a sure team trainer, Jeff Monroe told me a few moments ago on that last possession, Irvin hurt his left shoulder. It was a bruise, and you saw him flexing that left wrist. He lost feeling in his left arm for a moment, but he is all right, ready to go for MSU. Second half, just 15 yards rushing from him, and that is the total offense for Michigan State this half. Schultz with time, and Octavius Long takes a knee as he takes the catch. 
at the 28. Irvin a must because to win this game, Michigan State has to do what no one has done this year against the Michigan defense, and that's score in the fourth quarter. If you love football, this is a great place to be. <laughs> this is exciting football. Irvin back on the field, the Michigan defense back on the field, third down and two early in the fourth quarter. Urban from tailback swings out, hesitates, gets away from Hall, and with the second effort and a favorable mark, they might have the first down. This is yet another phenomenal move by Irvin. James Hall has had an outstanding game. His pursuit angle is perfect. All he's got to do is come down with Irvin. He's got him dead to rights right there. Can't get him on the ground. That's determination. That's strength and agility. And I'll tell you what else. It's a first down. First, second half, first down. The only one they've managed this half. Cedric Irvin has the ability to carry a football team on his shoulders with efforts just like that one. All he had to do is just go down. Nobody would have blamed him. We would have said, what a nice play by James Hall. Cedric Irvin won't go down when he's supposed to. Jim Herman yesterday making the comparison to Emmett Smith. Uh, he's got the greatest feet I've ever seen, and Hall might agree. Irvin can throw it if he has anybody open, and he didn't, and he's cornered at the 31. Check in again, Mike Tirico. After falling behind by a couple of touchdowns, Alabama has come back to take the lead. Here's how they scored. Get it in his hands some time, Phantom said. Curtis Alexander, 56-yard touchdown, late third. The Crimson Tide leading Ole Miss by three. Charles Woodson just saved a touchdown, and these are the kinds of things that you don't see unless you study the subtleties. But Cedric Irvin was going to throw that ball. Woodson laid back, stayed in his coverage, rather than come up and tackle the young tailback, and so he had no place to throw it. And he did so because they expected Irvin at some point to try pass. They said he's a quadruple threat. And they denied him the chance. Schultz. Tried to force this one to Long, and it's the fourth Michigan interception of the afternoon, and Woodson right there again. And what did Gary Tranquil tell us yesterday afternoon? We know if you test Woodson often enough, sooner or later he is going to burn you. But now, twice in a row, they've gone into his area. He's in man coverage here on Octavius Long. And he simply has too much quickness and athletic ability. Reacts, comes up with the football. The last time, we should note, the last time he made a great play, his offense did nothing with it. Bill, he has picked off two of the last four passes Schultz has attempted. Two of the three they've thrown to his side. And Greasy finally ready to go deep and too deep for streets. A graphic illustration of why you're better off just ignoring his side of the field. Three times they've thrown that side, and twice he's taken it away. That's amazing. Michigan finally put it up on first down. They probably should have put Woodson in the game to go catch that one. It was a corner blitz, well blocked, but the route was well covered as well. So second and 10 from the 33. With three wides, they go Howard out of the backfield. Got some room. Big play, big play, big play. Inside the 20. Blocked by David Brant, sprung in for 16 yards. David Brant's in the game at right guard for Chris Zeman. And that's what big linemen are supposed to do. You could see it developing. You could see 67 had a good angle. 67, David Brandt, the right guard. He sprung his back down there. Now we've got first down for Michigan at the 17-yard line. Brandt right there moving his feet extremely well, giving his man a chance. Reese came off and still made the play, but after a substantial game. Williams, they almost broke a tackle by Amp Campbell. 
has him at the 15. 13 minutes and change to go in East Lansing. Dave Barnett, Bill Curry, and Dave Ryan. 13-7 Michigan at a jam-packed Spartan Stadium. Ryan Greasy ended the first half with a touchdown on a quarterback sneak. Before that, it was Michigan State, 7-3 in a defense-dominated first half. Second half, even more so. Absolutely, and we're back down here talking field goal again as a big play. Greasy hangs one up for streets, and the flag will be thrown on the defender back there, Eric Morris. Pretty obvious you had to throw it because if Morris doesn't, Go for the interference. It's an easy touchdown catch for Streets. Pressure on the quarterback from Ike Reese. Might have been called for a blow to the head there. And a veteran wide receiver gets his body in position, ties Streets, and forces Eric Morris to run into him and draws the foul. That's just good thinking. So they're going to mark it down. For well, the Michigan offense at the two. The rule on pass interference is not half the distance to the goal line. It's 15 yards. And if you can't get 15 yards because you're in inside the 17-yard barrier or 16, then the ball is placed at the two. And that's what's happened here. Greasy, the call at the line. Howard. We'll take the handoff and leap for the touchdown. Excellent blocking up front at a most critical time. This stout Michigan State defense has been knocked around by the Michigan offensive line today when it got down close to the goal line. And Michigan's dominance in the red zone this year continues. Baker still perfect for the year on the PAT. So 12-26 to go. And the margin for the Wolverines has grown to 13. You're a judge at America's most prestigious beer competition. You can't see anything. Can't see the labels. All you've got to go on is taste. So who wins the gold medal for best tasting American premium lager? Original Coors. Close your eyes and taste the one that won for taste. Original Coors. Presenting the ultimate tire for your 4x4, the Michelin LTX. Michelin technology gives it a smooth, quiet ride. Yet it's tough enough, Michelin enough, to get you through anything. It's your own little world. You're way up high, so you can see everything. It has lots of places to hide your treasures. It's roomy. It's cozy with space for all your favorite things and your favorite people. It makes you feel like you're part of a club. Dodge Caravan. It's like a treehouse for grown-ups. Now get up to $1,000 cash back on Dodge Caravan. Polished brass has always had one problem. Until now. Delta introduces brilliance. The extraordinary polished brass finish that's guaranteed to shine for life. Brilliance from Delta. The faucet. ESPN's presentation of college football is brought to you by the new Dodge. It's about change. And by the Delta Faucet Company. Delta, the faucet. Another scenic spot on the Michigan State campus, the Mary Mayo Dormitory. As Feely prepares to kick with a 20 to 7 Michigan lead. And Renaud from the two. Only to the 15. 
Charles Woodson has two second-half interceptions. Five now for the year. The first one, an out-of-this-world athletic play, but they didn't get any points that time. Schultz trying to force one right back in his direction. Big mistake, and it does, in this occasion, lead to the touchdown by Howard. And ironically, the last guy I can recall seeing make plays like that was a guy named Herb Adderley, who was a Spartan in his college days, but played with us with the Green Bay Packers through the late 60s. And Bill Burke, who has accounted for their only points today on the fake field goal toss to Urban, hands to Urban, no game right into Dahani Jones. So Schultz is yanked after the back-to-back -back picks on four passes. Two of them picked off by Woodson. As you look at Burke's numbers coming into this game, he did add, a, of course, his second touchdown pass on that today. Played eight games last year as a freshman, including a couple of starts when Schultz was hurt against Eastern Michigan and Iowa. So he is not totally without experience. Sophomore out of Warren, Ohio. And a lefty who was brought down on a blitz, Ian Gold and Rob Renis. Michigan defense licking its chops now. New meat. A new quarterback. We're going after him. We're going to shut the door on this group. Jim Herman's got him over there saying, get after this young quarterback. We got the other one to make some mistakes. And I thought Coach Tranquil was very candid when he said that Todd Schultz does not always make the best decisions, even though he's a good athlete. Third and a mile against this defense. They're ready to come with the blitz again. They pick up Woodson, though. He fights his way right to the delivery by Burke and almost deflected it before it was deflected and almost intercepted by Tommy Hendricks. Oh, Tommy Hendricks is looking at the goal line when you got to look at the football. Woodson caused the poor throw with a blitz. He's absolutely amazing. Right in the quarterback's face. If Hendricks doesn't catch it, Marcus Ray is going to. So Edinger will have to kick it out of his own end zone and uh, maybe his best effort of the day. Woodson brought down by Octavius Long. Just short of midfield, 42-yard punt. Octavius got to be proud he's able to get that guy on the ground. Florida State is 43-1 and in the ACC since they joined up. Their one loss was in Charlottesville two years ago. And tonight they take in the number one total defense and the number three ranking with revenge on their minds. That's prime time tonight on ESPN beginning at 7 Eastern. What else can Charles Woodson do? They yet again see him offensively. He has been nothing less than otherworldly defensively today, and he brought that punt down at the 49-yard line where Michigan takes over with a comfortable 13-point lead. Greasy to Shea, the second tight end, and he takes it to the 40 as Ant Campbell is going to be called for the hit he delivered against Greasy. The play goes for 11. Campbell, though, with a, uh, a high blow right to the helmet of Greasy. The rule says you cannot strike the head. You use your head to strike another player's head, especially the quarterback. They're going to call it every single time. It's a good rule with the speed and power of today's Rumping players. Rumping the passer, a blow to the head, 15 yards added on, first down. To make matters worse for Michigan State, Greasy calmly went ahead, completed the pass to Aaron Shea, and the Wolverines are knocking at the door again. I think you could be carrying a baseball bat back there and swing it at him, and he would still be just as calm. Well, he's got that greasy calm about him. I'm not saying his dad could do that for him, but it certainly didn't hurt to be in that family, and he does have that. Marcus Knight in motion as Anthony Thomas finds a nice big uh, hole on the right side, takes it down to the 21-yard line. 
Oh, I would have loved to have seen Anthony explode there. The hole was bigger than the game ended up giving him. Had he just accelerated with that great speed of his, he would have run a lot farther. I haven't seen that much today, Thomas, as they've gone with the experience of Howard the senior and Williams the junior at tailback. When you have the luxury of that many good backs, you sort of go with who has the hot hand, and today it's been Chris Howard. I think we've got a shaken up official who will get uh, checked on. That is uh, the umpire Roger Haber, I believe. The amazing thing is that the umpires don't get hurt more than they do. They're right there in the middle of the action. They line up just behind the defensive line. He seems to be holding his knee. So an official timeout for the official. 10.27 to go in East Lansing. You can be the only Jumping Jupiter, what is this? The new Sprint store at Radio Shack, George. You could win communications for life. I could win? Let's roll! Let's roll! It's the 21st century! Win long distance, mobile phones, accessories? Yes, yes, and yes! Win communications for life? Don't even think about it. The new Sprint store at Radio Shack. You've got questions, we've got answers. Jenny, would you do me the honor? No. Jen, babe, you, me, prom. Yeah. Hi, hello. How you doing? Nope. Kelly Springfield tires are designed to go a long way. No. Jenny, would you go to the prom with me? We've got the warranties to prove it, so go. Jenny, you go to the prom with me? Oh. And can I use your phone? My car's out of gas. Kelly Springfield, get every mile you can out of life. When we spread the wheels out a bit, moved the windshield forward a tad, lowered the step-up height a skosh, and widened the aisle a smidgen, we created a caravan with 32 more cubic feet of room. It's remarkable what a few alterations will do. Now get up to $1,000 cash back on Dodge Caravan. To the rescue comes Carl Pagnelli, whose job most of the day until the injury to the, the previous umpire, Roger Haberer, was to uh, get the uh, play stopped while we take our timeouts. And so he has also had to be replaced as he charges to the rescue. They continue to uh, check on Haberer. Carl Pagnelli, though, the bullpen umpire. As we get back to play, it's second and five for the Wolverines. Lowering a shoulder, Thomas down to the 17, wouldn't be third and about three. Second and five or less has been a frequent refrain today. Michigan's first down production has been remarkable and probably the single most important ingredient to their success today because it has allowed them to dominate the time of possession, to continue to run the football down the throat of that outstanding Michigan State defense and build this lead. Knight and Streets are left on third and two. Greasy over the middle, and just the second time today, he finds Jeremy Tuman, and that's a first down inside the 14. Let's check in with Mike Tarico. Oklahoma State was done and finished, down 23 early third quarter, but they've come back after one touchdown. Tony Lindsay, 34 yards. Sean Love, to within eight, and they have the ball at the Missouri 10 with plenty of time left in this game. Cowboys hoping to stay unbeaten. Michigan looking like they fully intend to. Trying to add to a 13-point margin. Thomas pushes it forward to the 10. Where it may well be better on the spot first and goal. Or I beg your yeah. pardon. They will they'll still need about seven, but they will mark it uh, right at the 10-yard line. And from there, third down, and we'll call it uh, seven. 
Yeah, and that big truck up front, Chris Floyd, number seven, the fullback, deserves a tremendous amount of credit for what's happened here today thus far. He is the lead blocker on most of the plays that these tailbacks are gaining all this yard, yardage. Back from his ankle injury, which sent him down last week. Second and seven carry for Thomas. Started to bounce it outside. And then is spun around at the nine. Let's go down to Dave. Well, Dave, our umpire has a strained calf. He aggravated that early in the game, and he is apparently done, according to Michigan State trainer Jeff Monroe. Also, Chris Floyd has really been badly hobbled by that ankle injury. Remember, he did not play a couple weeks back in our game we had in Ann Arbor when Michigan took on Northwestern. He has really been battling that all day, playing with a lot of pain, but as Bill said, very gutsy effort today for Chris Floyd. Nobody wants to sit this one. Heavily wrapped ankle and all for Floyd. Third and six. As they pick up the state blitz on a slant, Ty Streets dropped it after he hit the turf at the one. Inside the one is where they give him the catch. And now he's arguing that he recovered his own fumble, but I think they're going to say that the ground caused it after this is all sorted out. The officials are right on the spot. They know exactly what happened, and they're the only people in this stadium who really do. And they'll work it out. That <laughs> our new man got thrown to the wolves, literally, no pun intended, in a big hurry. The umpire has to turn and see that and make that call. And basically, what he will have to tell the other officials now is whether or not Streets had possession of the ball when he hit the ground. The ground cannot cause a fumble. They sure are having a long conference. The pass is ruled incomplete. Fourth down. Roy Carr says, what? What do you mean he didn't have that one? Well, and Nick Saban is not arguing the point. Ray Hill on that play for Michigan State. He never had possession of the ball. It was an excellent call by the officials. That ball has to be put away. It's coming out as he goes toward the ground. So again, they call on Craig Baker, 27 yards this time. Remember, last time this angle caused the miss, but not here. So with about half the fourth quarter to go, Michigan adds to the lead, and it's now 23-7. This month, the racing excitement explodes into your dish on Direct TV. Join the excitement when thousands of car customizers live to flex their automotive muscles. And they're the most ferocious racing machines on Earth with over 4,500 horsepower, capable of speeds in excess of 300 miles per hour. Watch as spectators turn out for the fire in the pipe. Catch these titles playing in the 190s. The earth shakes and the heart stops this month on Direct Ticket. Miss you at the game last night. You and Craig go out? No, we stay home. Oh, sounds serious. Yeah, we watch TV. Honeymoon's over, huh? <laughs> no, it was great. It was romantic. What'd you watch? <laughs> Playboy TV. Playboy TV? Yeah. That must have been his idea of fun. Nope. You know? Mine. A little too much curve? Uh, yeah. ESPN, punt, pass, oh. and sit. At the whistle, attack the sled. Alternating shoulders, seizing only when you've advanced it to its proper position. It's ESPN Sunday Night NFL. Well, the Wolverines now at total command with just seven minutes and 40 seconds. Baker, another field goal, and they lead 23 to 7. Nothing's been very returnable at all today against Jay Feely. Renaud from the four. Looks for a wall right side. Let's hear from Mike Tarico. 
Well, Wisconsin's taking the lead. This will be a very controversial play. A week after the Big Ten officials admitted they missed one in the Minnesota Penn State game. Yes, Donald Hayes pushed out of bounds, but looked like he was still out of bounds when he caught that pass. It set up Ron Dane's touchdown run. He's over 147. Wisconsin has the ball on a one-point lead. There again, Minnesota down one. Michigan, as we have told, has been uh, completely clean defensively, unscored on for the season in the fourth quarter. Michigan State, as we said at the outset, tends to do their best work in the first quarter, and that has been borne out today. Burke remains the quarterback, got it off. Urban hangs on. And knocked out of bounds right at about the line of scrimmage by Andre Weathers. Urban has been controlled in the second half, just his second catch. Woodson, Woodson misses him there. He has an excellent concentration to come down with the football. First half for Cedric, 14 carries, 66 yards. This half, six carries, 15 yards. Burke, well, right between Long and Scott. I think it was Long he was hoping to hit. The backup quarterback in most big college situations really doesn't get a lot of reps in practice, so his timing with his receivers is thrown off. The throw to Irving a minute ago was a good throw. Cedric had a little trouble controlling it, but came down with it. This last one was very poorly timed and was not accurate. They keep him in the backfield. And then slip him out on the pattern, but no chance for Burke to even glance at him. Steal meeting Josh Williams at the quarterback. Yeah, these big guys now up front know that they have to throw the football. So they just lay their ears back, do their spin moves, turn, twist, have fun. That's what defensive linemen love. Glenn Steele, James Hall, in on the quarterback much too quickly. And all Schultz can do, stand and watch and just grow in frustration. They go after the putt, and it is blocked through the end zone for a safety. The block by Kevin Bryant for Michigan, number 22. There's a flag on the field. There is a flag. Flag thrown way across near the far sideline at about the 20-yard line. And we've got at least 11 officials in green shirts down there on the field that are assisting with the call. Offside, on the defense, five yards, repeat, fourth down. Rule number one, when you have a punt block on, you line up on side. We can all see the tip of the football. You've got a chance to put these guys away. A little bit of an early start here. The scheme was superb which sprung Kevin Bryant so they could block the kick. Terrence Quinn, 25, was the man offside. This punt without incident, fair caught by Woodson at the 30. Down to Dave Ryan. Well, guys, Lloyd Carr has been at Michigan since 1980 when he came as defensive backs coach. He's seen some great defense come through Ann Arbor. He says the best ever was 1985 and this year's 97 Wolverines. In 85, the team went 10-1-1, one one, won the Fiesta Bowl, finished second in the nation. Through six games, that D gave up five and a half points a game. This year, number one in the Big Ten, number one in the nation, 8.3 points a game surrendered. But remember, 17 of those points came last week against Iowa on long kick returns plus interception return. The Wolverines one yard line to bring that average up. And this week, Cedric Irvin scoring on a fake field goal try. So maybe those numbers aren't quite as high as they should be. Well, they were impressive to start the day, and uh, you'd have to say even more so. And especially they, individually, Charles Woodson, we already knew, may well have been considered the best defensive back in the nation. He has solidified that standing today. Somebody asked me earlier in a radio interview, is there anybody that's closing on Peyton Manning for Heisman consideration? You've got to say Woodson. You can't just do it on numbers. Anybody that can play like that has to be a factor. This is Howard. 
Well, as the weather gets a little colder, you, the college football fan, need choices. And for $11.95 a week, you can see Penn State, Oklahoma State, Arizona State, or Mississippi State. No matter what state you're in, simply call your local cable operator or direct TV and tell them you want, you need, you have to have the game plan. And from that section of Spartan Stadium, apparently the view out of the stadium more compelling than the view inside. Euchre seats. Howard. Bring up third and about four. Mike Tarico, what do you have? Cowboys have come all the way back, down 30 to 7, a couple of minutes into the third quarter. Watch this catch by 6-6, Alonzo Mays. It looked even better in slow-mo. That made it 30 to 28. Then after getting a penalty on Missouri, will swinging gate extra point to Willie Grissom. They're tied at 30, and Oki State is the ball back. There's a better tight end than Lloyd Carr's Jeremy Tubman. It might be Alonzo May. Well, you just love to have both of them. Be greedy about it. Howard. Not enough for the first. Tackled by Ledger just at the 40. Quiet day for Mr. Tooman. Just a couple of catches. He's had an excellent day blocking. We've raved about his receiving all year, but he's had a really fine day blocking. He gets into his man, keeps his feet moving, uses that athletic ability along with his toughness. But Michigan State has done a better job here. They stopped him on first down with only a two-yard gain, and they brought up a fourth down situation, which has been tough to do on these drives in the second half by Michigan. Four minutes, 38 seconds. 427 up to 438. But Michigan still has the offense out there from their own 40-yard line on a fourth and one. I would be very surprised if they don't punt this football. Howard, over 100 yards for the seventh time in his career. His best effort of the season. They've done this twice now. Looked as if they were going to go for it on a fourth down, and then at the last instant, here comes the punt unit. They do that to keep Michigan State from getting their return unit on the field. They make the defense stay out there. Marker down as Urban caught that one on the run. Just a 33-yard punt. That is superb strategy by Lloyd Carr and his coaching staff make Michigan State keep their defense on the field rather than getting all those quick guys out there so Cedric can run one back on them. And they get the bonus of a push in the back here. Committed by people who aren't accustomed to being on the field during punt return situations. Interference with the opportunity. Violation of the two-yard belt on the kicking team. Five yards. First down. Lloyd Carr is four minutes and change away from a 7-0 start. 4-0 in Big Ten play. Michigan State starting from their 32 when we return to Spartan Stadium. For the Wolverines, who are apparently going to end a five-year streak of victories by the home team. Burke has this one juggled, but caught by LaVale Richardson, a redshirt freshman from Burke's hometown of Warren, Ohio. Burke's getting hammered every single time he sets up. He's showing a lot of poise to come out and throw the ball that well in these conditions. Both sides of the ball, up front, the Michigan front people have dominated Michigan State in the second half, offense and defense. Renaud. Fazell had a swipe at his ankles, came up empty in a first down by Mark Renaud at the 49-yard line as we go under four minutes. First down, Michigan State. 
soon as we're done here, tennis is next. The Eurocard Open semifinals from Stuttgart, Germany is the eighth event of the Mercedes Super 9. Lots of prize money at stake. That's next on ESPN. Stuttgart, is that how you I, say that? Just a guess. Over the middle, Renard. Who's close for another first down. Renard in there right now. Urban looked like in the first half, Bill, he was uh, going to do whatever he pleased today, but got banged on the shoulder even before that happened. Though pretty much a non-factor. What did they do before he got hurt to control him? Well, what they did is they started to dominate the line of scrimmage. When you can whip that blocker in front of you and get a bunch of big, fast guys running to the ball, then you can control even a great player like Cedric Irvin, and that's what's happened. I know I said it a minute ago, and I don't want to sound like a broken record, but football is still a game of the trenches. And Michigan has taken over in the second half with their big people up front, in addition to the athletic plays by Woodson. This streak is still alive. They still haven't been scored on in the fourth quarter. And in the third quarter, they've given up only three field goals all year. Jordan throws it away. Second interception today by Ray. Caught from behind at the 30-yard line after a 30-yard return. Second today by Ray, who also had two last week and two last year in this matchup against the Spartans. Well, Closell Adams showed me something there. The big guy from Michigan State who ran Ray down from behind to tackle him. This is a nice play by Ray as he breaks on the ball, but he's going to take a lot of heat from his teammates because a 330-pound offensive tackle caught him from behind. A view of that is obscured by the coaches on the sideline. Well, there's but one happy coach on the sideline, though. Jim Herman, the fifth interception by his defense today. Ray has two, Woodson two, and Weathers chipping in with his first of the year. Well, it reminds you that this particular game is dominated by the running team. New quarterback Scott Dreisbach with the give that time to Howard. Let's hear from Mike Tirico. Well, Dave, a big hole for Ole Miss now, down 29 to 14. The kickoff to John Avery. He'll take it back 100 yards, but watch at the end. He picks up a celebration flag for how he goes in the end zone. Thus, Ole Miss can't go for two. Their extra point is blocked. So this little celebration cost him a couple of points. Scott Dreisbach who started 11 games last year and then was relieved in the second half against Ohio State. Greasy, of course, leading Michigan from behind to win and has been banged up virtually all this season. Thomas had some room outside, found it. We've got a marker down. Thomas right at the pylon. They'll mark him out inside the one-yard line. But we'll wait for the flag, which was thrown by the referee, trailing the play, and it's coming back on hold. Anthony Thomas finally breaking one. Looks like Chris Floyd, number seven, who's played so well, made another key block, and the big guys up front just continue to hammer away. But this one will come back on the hole. On the offense, 10 yards from the spot of the foul, repeat, second down. Well, here's what Michigan still has in front of them. Home against Minnesota. And then the eight, the next one that will have national implications at number two Penn State, at Wisconsin the 15th. And, of course, they close with the Buckeyes. That one is in Ann Arbor this year on the 22nd. Minnesota has shown that they are not to be trifled with. Dreisbach to give once again to Thomas for nothing. Dreisbach has had his right hand in and out of the cast this fall. He was injured lifting a desk while he was moving at the beginning of the semester. Partially tore a ligament in his wrist. Says he's back to 100%. Had a good week of practice. And they moved him ahead of Jason Kapsner in the depth chart at quarterback behind Greasy. 
But this is the first time that the Michigan coaches have told us that Scott Dreisbach's wrist is okay and that he really can go in there and play and throw with the kind of authority that he's capable of throwing. Well, Carr, just a hint of a smile there. Probably didn't expect to get to play Dreisbach today. Thomas has dropped for a loss. At one time inside Spartan Stadium, there were 79,687, the eighth largest crowd in Spartan Stadium history. And just 800 off the record of 80,401 against Notre Dame seven years ago. Just about all those wearing maize and blue are still around, and many of those wearing green and white quietly making their way out with a minute 42 to go. I'm Kenny, a friend of Dick's. Miller Light has asked me to find four cheerleaders to send to the Super Bowl. Today, you're going to meet the Caesar Brothers from Hawaii, USA. They have their own way of looking at cheerleading. Miller, 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 So what do you think, America? Rah! Could the Caesar Brothers be cheerleaders? Uh -oh. Help us out. Participate where you buy and drink Miller Lite. My name is Anda Andre, Director of Design for Ian Schroeger Hotels. I direct the creative effort of building all the hotels. We are our worst competition, so we just have to keep up with ourselves. The thing is, as long as you have to be competitive in the world we are living in, anything that helps, you should get. Let's go! Promotional consideration provided by National Car Rental, the official car rental company of ESPN. Let's go! Well, trends that will apparently continue in the 11 times these two have both been ranked. The higher ranked team has never lost, and the home team has never won. Michigan is making more plays, and in a lot of cases, the most spectacular plays they have made this season. Our Kelly Springfield players of the game today, Charles Woodson, four tackles, two interceptions. They throw at him three times, and twice he picks them off. Cedric Irvin, mostly in the first half, 24 carries, 81 yards, and nine catches for 77 and the only Michigan State touchdown. Kelly Springfield proud to donate $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund on behalf of Woodson and Irving. Michigan, in the previous years, when they've started 6-0 as they did this year, this one moves them to 7-0. They've Coach. always won double figures, but strangely enough, they've never won a bowl game when they've had a start like this. Well, it looks like they'll get a chance at least at some kind of bowl and maybe the big one if they can continue to play this way. Coach Nick Saban indicating that he's deadly serious about not having personal fouls and a bunch of stuff like that by keeping Underwood out of the game. Moving on the right side that time for uh, the Spartans. Dave Mudge, the tackle. With the third quarterback of the day for Saban seeing some action now, and it's Gus Ornstein, the transfer from Notre Dame. You may remember in the first half, Please Underwood set the clock. One minute, 37 seconds. So Saban going to his third quarterback, Ornstein. That's what they play for, the Paul Bunyan Trophy. The legend behind uh, the formation of the Great Lakes in Michigan mythology will remain in Ann Arbor for the second year in a row. Ornstein is big, luckily, 6'5 and 218, and shaken up after uh, he got whacked pretty good at the 27-yard line. Yeah, I'm afraid he injured his shoulder. He was caught from behind by Grady Brooks, number 59. Perfectly legal hit. But he's very slow getting up. Player 11, Doug the youngsters are in there and they like to play too. So they're hustling, hitting James Whitley, a true freshman corner. 
So it's a shame that a guy like Ornstein finally gets in the game and gets injured right away. Back comes Schultz, who was benched after the second Woodson interception. Ornstein also a baseball talent has been drafted twice once by the Mariners once by the Padres as a first baseman out of Tenafly New Jersey played five games last year very seldom this year is just three for six through the air he's a junior and once Schultz departs after this season he and Bill Burke will fight it out for Schultz's job next year. Draw play, second carry today by Leroy McFadden, the sophomore out of Eden Prairie, Minnesota, is good for 14 Leroy yards. I, I don't think either you or I and probably anybody that's watched Michigan defensively this year is surprised at all at the performance they've put together. And Michigan has thrived with a very conservative game plan offensively, just enough to put it in the hands of their defense, which again comes through. Yes, and it was obviously the wise thing to do under these circumstances. Coach Carr sensed that his defense was going to have a big day. And what he wanted to do is to make sure he didn't put him in bad field position with mistakes offensively, and it has worked to perfection. Jim Herman said if we shut down Cedric Irvin, we'll win. We really didn't do that in the first half, but give him an A-plus in the second half. A-plus in the second half, and a B-minus in the first half with an F for coverage on a fake field goal. Mark Renard. All the way to the 42, where Diallo Johnson, number nine, grabs him from behind. 16 yards. Yeah, and those veteran defensive players for the Wolverines are up on that sideline. And they're yelling at those youngsters, you keep them out of that end zone. Don't you mess up our fourth quarter record. I don't think anybody hasn't thought about that. Either the ones playing or the ones that have already done the playing and are doing the watching right now. Octavis Long with the catch. Under 40 seconds. Nice tackle by James Whitley, a really good-looking freshman. Michigan State will stop it at 41 seconds with a timeout. At 12.30 next Saturday, we've got another crucial Big Ten game. It's so important, it's a secret even to us. But tune in. And then in primetime, we go to the Big East. It's been a seesaw rivalry throughout the 90s. So when the Mountaineers get to the Carrier Dome, anything can happen. Syracuse has scored 50-plus three weeks in a row. West Virginia, Syracuse, primetime next Saturday. Remember how close these two teams were coming into this game, offensively and defensively, statistically. And the question was, whose will would prevail with the Wolverines coming into a big-time hostile stadium with this kind of rivalry, really for the first time this year, and Michigan State coming off a disappointment a week ago, the question has been answered. The Wolverines have a chance to be a great team. Let's go down to Dave Ryan. Not, Dave, not exactly good news for Michigan State quarterbacks. Bill Burke, who is the backup, came in this game for Schultz. He has a dinger to his head and had a lead with a slight concussion. Gus Ornstein, a bad to his left shoulder. He's done as well. Schultz, last man standing. Guns this one over the middle and incomplete. Intended for Gary Scott, as usual, well surrounded. And they have completely shut down the leading receiver for the Spartans, Josh Kerr, who had 11 catches last week and 24 coming in, nothing today. Brian Greasy enjoying this one from the vantage point of the winning quarterback. 36 seconds. Schultz on third and three under some heat. Renard will be a couple of feet short on the first down. And the Spartans with their last timeout, which will stop the clock at 24 seconds. That's Jeff Holtry, number 45, 
linebacker who backs up Clint Copenhaver. Jeff was the player of the year in the state of Utah, not once but twice. Just recently returned from his Mormon mission of two years. He is the long snapper for the Wolverines and has a bright future. Now Coach Herman's got him over there with his patented defensive huddle on the field at the sideline. He's telling them, keep him out of the end zone. Coming up for Michigan State, they have the Buckeyes in uh, their next encounter. That's right here next week. They go to Purdue, they go to Illinois, and they close again at home against Penn State. Such an attractive home schedule that they had shattered their previous record for season ticket sales. Improved by about 11,000 this year, over 60,000 for the first time and they are sold out for the season for the first time since their last Rose Bowl campaign 1987 but with back to back losses to Northwestern and Michigan no more Rose Bowl hopes this year and they'll stop the clock just long enough to move the chains maybe take one or two more cracks at the end zone. Diallo Johnson with the sixth Michigan interception of the afternoon at a 37-yard return. There is a flag, two flags, in fact, over in front of the Michigan bench right about where he ran out of bounds. I suppose there is no more appropriate way for this game to end. I guess they flagged him for throwing the ball. It's against the rules. Not sure that's a big deal right here. Good ball. Unsportsmanlike. On the defensive team. After the run back. 15 yards. First down. This is a tip ball. Another one of the outstanding young defensive players, Diallo Johnson, picks it off, takes it to the sideline, and then without explanation, tosses it up in the air, which is a 15-yarder, so the coaches will teach Diallo what to do with the football after he reaches the sideline. Todd Schultz came into this game having just four interceptions all year. He's thrown five today. And a team total of six picks by Michigan. So Jason Tapsner, the redshirt freshman, will take the final snap of the afternoon as the celebration begins for Michigan. They retain bragging rights. They retain their national hopes with a 23-7 demolition job against their upstate rivals from Michigan State. For Bill Curry and Dave Bryant, I'm Dave Barnett. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. The Wolverines win it 23 to 7 over Michigan State. Now, let's return you to Mike Tarico. Okay.